Hello everyone. Um, I kept saying I'll make more vlogs, but you know, we're finally on day two. And um, actually only in real time, I only have like three weeks left and I'm just doing a vlog on day two. So, you know, things are going great. <laughs> So, it's been a hot minute since, like, my first week in Korea, um, but I do remember being super sore when I got home from the musical. Um, obviously, I had been walking a lot. I went from, you know, 14-day quarantine and literally sitting in my room doing nothing and, like, walking maybe, like, 50 steps a day, like, max, to suddenly, like, walking miles to do stuff. Um, but I had started to gain, like, a bit more confidence in, um public transport because I had taken the subway. Also, I want to show off my nails since you probably just heard them. Clinkle and linkle. But anyways, so second day out. Um, second day we had like group activities with CIEE. So I really didn't take like a lot of footage because it was mostly just like going out to eat with Chrissy and like we had some bagels at like this really great bagel place. And then <laughs> um we went out, we had this thing called the Sinchon Tour, where like students from the local air, from the local area, the reason I um, came and like gave us a tour, and the reason there's quotes around that is our student didn't go to Yonsei, wasn't from Sinchon, and like didn't know where to go, and so she was just as confused as us, but it was really fun getting to know her, she was really sweet. Um, we got Bingsu, it was... I've really grown to like mango since coming here. Um, I really didn't like mango before in the United States. Like of all the fruits, I was like, eh, mango is like towards the bottom. But since coming here, it's been great. I've been eating a lot of mango. Um, my current favorite thing is like mango um, apple stuff. They have like a little like slushy of it at McDonald's that I drink a lot. And then there's a coffee shop like two minutes from my dorm that is um, has like a mango banana and it's really good like smoothie so I get that and then I just kind of like walked to the campus as you can see like this is like the building that like everyone has in their Yonsei like photos and like it's on the pamphlets and stuff so of course I had to take a picture of it and then that evening we went to Hongdae. Hongdae has a line cacao and it's kind of just like the trendy college area and so obviously I went to the line store and I blew lots of money um, but it was really cool seeing the BT21 stuff. I definitely felt like that was the majority of the store was the BT21 stuff. Like, there really wasn't much of, like, Brown or Sally, the other characters. It was a lot of BT21. But, um, it was really cool to see all that. And so we just kind of explored Hongdae. Um, it's really funny. We actually went to a pizza place in Hongdae. And I was expecting Korean pizza. And if you've ever seen videos of Korean pizza, like, it's just different. And I've had like Korean style pizza since coming here. I mean, it tastes like Tostitos pizza, like one of those like little party pizzas you can buy it, like in the frozen section at like the Dollar Tree, like really cheap or whatever. And so I, was, I wasn't really expecting much. We go to this place. It's called Tom's Pizza. Expecting like a Korean man that just picked the name Tom. No, well, actually ended up being a uh, white New Zealander. Um, and he actually ended up talking to us, since it was four of us girls all sitting there. We ended up talking to him, to him for a while. He was really nice and really fun. So if you're ever in Hongdae, go to Tom's Pizza. It was great pizza, a great service, great guy running it. Um, but yeah, it was really funny because we expected, like, to have to order in Korean or something. And it was some guy from New Zealand. <laughs> um, and then day three, I call this, like, my tourist day in Seoul. Um... This was exploring Seoul activity through the study abroad program I'm with. And we basically got handed a map, some team money cards, which are like the subway transport cards, and like some places we had to go to. And we had to like fill out this like little, we had to fill out this like little, this little paper that had like places we had to go and like tasks we had to do. And so that was our day. It rained when we first got going, but it didn't rain anymore after that. So we went to trying to remember. Mm -hmm. This is all very informative. We went to Myeongdong first. 
Um, we had to take a picture of the Myeongdong bus sign, and then we took a picture of like what encapsulates Myeongdong, which we took a picture down in the underground shopping. Not a lot of it was open. We were there on like at like 1 p.m., and there was just like nothing open. Um, what? I think it was a Saturday, but there was just like nothing open. Um, and then we had some gipsal, which is like pork fat, and it was it was beautiful. It was uh. So they have this thing called tourist police. They're not really police. Um, they're people there meant to help you. Like, and they're like, wear like red outfits and like red hats and you can go up and be like, hey, I'm a tourist. Where, where what should I do? Where should I go? Uh, specifically, if you have anywhere that like you're really looking for, they're good. They're also really good if you're like looking just for like a place to eat. Um, they have recommendations, but they speak English. Um, so, if you're ever in Korea and you ever get lost, look for some tourist police wearing their bright red hats and bright red stuff. Um, I took a pic video here of the I Seoul You thing. That's just, it's a thing you'll see throughout if you ever visit Korean, like, Seoul. It's just supposed to be like, I love you, but I Seoul You. It's just a cute little tourist thing. And the next place we went to was... Chung... Chung Chung. Um... <laughs> Chungi Chun, <laughs> Chungi Chun. I don't know. It's like a, a river. It's it's right by uh, Mr. Guang Hyeman, Guang Guang Hyeman, Guang Guang Hyeman, whatever he wants song is called. You know, dee dee dee. So that was fun because I finally got to see at Guang Hyeman. I finally got to see it. <laughs> I got to experience it. Um, very disappointing. Q Hun didn't just appear when I thought of the song, but it was just like a little cute river. That has like pass at it and people hang out at it because it's like kind of cool down there the water's nice and so we just took a picture there and then our last stop was all the way down back in jam shill gonna go all the way to jam shill it was like a 30 minute subway ride and we had been walking all over we had been like lost 20 times like it was an experience that's why like i call it the tourist day is because we like went to different stops around seoul and like walked our butts off and so this is like day three out of quarantine and my legs were just gonna like fall off like I was like you're kidding me right like why do we have to keep doing walking activities but we went down to jam shill it was fun um we had to take a picture with the latte tower and then latte like park I think it's there's like a specific lake down there not sang pa naru park it was really pretty. It's just like a little park by Latte, like Latte World and Latte Tower. Um, <laughs> we took a picture with this giant Pororo statue. It was behind all this like caution tape because it, it was originally there was like a seating area around the Pororo statue. And so they had taped it all off so people don't sit there and obviously spread COVID. Um, and <laughs> it just looked like they had trapped him. Like they had trapped Pororo. And so that was fun. And then we had to go to some culture building that we were supposed to be at. On day four and back to the dorm um so sorry day five yeah next month oh sorry this was on june 26th we were on day three june 26th and now we're and this was for june 28th yeah, june 28th is when we were going to the cultural building so june 27th was the young book palace day which is probably one of the more fun days you get to dress up in the handbook you get to walk around you gotta go have some fun it was a blast i felt so incredibly gorgeous in the handbook i fully <laughs> expected to struggle because i'm plus size and there's not a lot of Koreans that are plus size but luckily they had some plus size options at this humbuck rental place um, that our study abroad program was paying for so that was nice and we also got tour guides that were like Korean history students so that was cool because like you can just walk around like look with your eyeballs but it's much cooler to hear about like the history from somebody and like w what things are um, but I felt incredibly gorgeous <laughs> I felt like I was like back at prom or something I was like this is an outfit that I want to wear forever like the embroidery was beautiful the colors were beautiful I loved the blue with like the blue skies in the background and like the subtle details on like the top it had like floral embroidery that was like pink and green and it just was so fun but it was so hot <laughs> um 
incredibly hot. It was like in the 90s and humid as all can be. And like you're walking around like shorts, big puffy skirt with multiple layers and like this like really top um, that was like kind of multiple layers too and thick. And so you're like walking around just drenched in sweat. But I mean, you feel beautiful. So I mean, that helps um, elevate it you know, not make the experience so bad. And we got, we got drinks. Our culture lady paid for it. Our little Korean student paid for it. It was really nice of her. Um, I was very lucky to have my BT21 fan with me. Um, I've been carrying this thing around everywhere because it's really hot here in Korea. And so I carried that around and that made that so much more enjoyable. But I will say that I could not live <laughs> back in ancient times. I could not imagine wearing that outfit. Like, I know it wasn't like a day in, day out outfit that they had like obviously like regular peasant clothes and you wouldn't be wearing a hanbok 24 seven unless you were like noble or going to a celebration or something. But I, ah, <laughs> um, I, it wasn't even much better, I guess, even maybe for like regular common people, but yeah. I, I would die. I would have died. It's incredibly hot. Um, it's really funny because they're talking about how, like, there was, like, floor, like, under things um, to warm the floors. Like, you could put a fire under the floors and, like, warm them up in ancient times. And it was, like, a million degrees. And it was, like, how did how, how did they stay cool? I know in dramas they have people follow them around with fans. <laughs> Is that it? Because <laughs> I would die. Um, but it was just so fun. I loved, I loved dressing up the whole time <laughs> and here is a picture with me my Korean tour guide and the other girl with me it was so fun and then me and my friends and then the following day we had the Korean culture workshop which it was like attending a lecture it was interesting and the lady that ran it was very knowledgeable and I really liked her voice it was very ASMR but it was just like attending a lecture we got like a free book out of it but like yay um you just spend a couple hours doing stuff and it rained when we left like it was pouring buckets it's like of course of course as soon as i leave it starts pouring buckets of course and so we ended up going to a mall in hongdae since that's where the culture workshop was was in a building in hongdae we ended up going to um, a mall in hongdae that one of uh, chrissy's friends chrissy's the girl i've made friends with um, one of her friends, Izzy Ishmael, if you're watching this, hello. Um, he had been there the previous day. It had a One Piece cafe in it. We didn't end up eating there. We ate at like a donkatsu, which is like a... It's like chicken fried chicken or whatever it is. Chicken fried steak? Chicken fried steak. Um, just kind of like a thinly beat piece of meat. I think it's pork? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But, and then it's breaded and deep fried. Not my favorite dish, um, but we we ate there and we went to the anime store up on that floor. And you can see some videos that I took of the anime store. There was it was pretty big, and there was actually kind of a line when we first got there to get in. But it was cool to see the anime in Korea. I do feel like what they watch in Korea anime wise is very different than what we watch. I know that Korea does have its own animation and. Uh, comics theirs are called manhua I don't know what their anim like their animation of theirs is called um I know some people just call them both anime but like Korea does have its own style and like shows exclusive to it that are exclusively dubbed in like Korean and stuff and so that was kind of cool to see you know what shows were Korean and what shows were Japanese and then kind of just seeing what's popular in Korea the store that we were at had a lot of boy group like ones in particular um like kind of like the boy idol animes which aren't my favorite they obviously had demon slayer stuff you know one of the most popular animes right now but that was like the only like anime that i knew i know that the wall that we're passing by has like a variety but the only one that i knew in the store was demon slayer i saw haikyuu stuff but not a lot and then like across the way there was like if you've ever been to one of those antique malls that have like cabinets that you like each seller rents or like little booths that's what this was um and like so people had different cabinets and you'd be like oh i want something out of cabinet 27 and you'd go up there you tell the person cabinet 27 they'd open it and you'd buy specifically from like one cabinet like you couldn't just like take things off the shelf because it's all different sellers and so that's what this one was 
it was interesting a lot of it was really cool and then in Hongdae there is a shop where you can buy clothes for your fan doll which is the doll I have at the end of as like my outro the little Q-Hun doll and I went there and I bought Q-Hun some outfits I also posed him they had like little like setups so you could like put your doll in and I wanted to do it so I did Totoro Hello Kitty but you can see some of the outfits here there are so many so many like, there were so many options. There were little, like, costumes, there were, like, regular clothes, like, trendy clothes. Some of them were very close to, I'm assuming, mimic mimicking some of the idol's outfits. But I got Q-Hun a penguin costume, because Q-Hun's a penguin. I got him just, like, a casual every day with a mask. I thought a mask would be cute, a little sweater, and some pants. And then I also bought Q-Hun a more, like, roughly white shirt to kind of give off that like phantom kind of classic renaissance vibe um, that Super Junior's been trying to do and Q Hun does and so I thought that was cute and so that and then the next day classes started so day two was exploring Sinchan in the morning and then Hong Day in the evening with Tom's Pizza and the BT21 store uh, day three was being the tourist for a day going to Myeongdong Jam Shill Day four um, was the handbook experience, and then day five was hung day in anime stores with more Q-Hun outfits. Um, so I hope you all liked it, and I'll see you hopefully soon. Q-Hun says to like, subscribe, or else. See you guys.